Okay, thank you very much for the invitation to, to speak here. And um, I'm going to take a slight uh, change in the, in the presentation so far, uh, because I will be speaking about uh, the Catalan case, that is a very clear case of conflicting democracy versus uh, rural law. But uh, I'm not really dealing with the European Union level, so if you want to follow on that, uh, I wrote already a piece uh, a few years ago that involved also the European Union level. But I want to present in this, um, in this paper, and I'm sorry I didn't submit it a paper, um, is basically three points here. First, uh, how the, the conflict has been framed as a conflict on democracy, as a democratic conflict. Second, how democracy was opposed to rule of law in the strategy followed by the Catalan independentist movement. And finally, very briefly, uh, no conclusion. I, I don't have a conclusion, I have a no conclusion, uh, which basically seeks to identify what is the real area of conflict. And in that, I think I will depart a little bit of established scholarship. I think that the, the area of conflict is slightly different to the one identified. Now, for, um, for starting this paper, I would like to frame it in relation to the convener's, um, convener's paper. Uh, and there are two assumptions that I adopt from that paper. Uh, first assumption is that the conflicts uh, happen because of the lack of hierarchy between competing sovereign claims. And, and the case I'm presenting here illustrates perfectly how this happened. A second assumption also wrote on the same paper is that the conflict sovereignty revolve about around who has uh, the last war over key political conflicts. And this is a highly crucial uh, factor in, in the crisis, in the conflict I am describing, and an unresolved uh, factor in the crisis I am describing. I think the Catalan, Catalan procession quest illustrates perfectly those conflicts, and in particular shows this class between democracy and rule of law. So first let me say about a few things about how the conflict has been framed uh, as a democratic conflict. And there are four elements in this, in this framing. The first is the appeal to sovereignty. Uh, and the appeal to sovereignty has to be understood. Uh, so far, no one has problematized, problematized the assumption of uh, sovereignty related to the demos, democratic sovereignty. But this one clear element within the democratic theory, which is the impossibility to democratically define the demos. This is the factor situation for any existing state and is the factor situation for any entity who aims to become independent. The demos cannot be defined democratically. So no people does not vote whether you want to become, say, a citizen of X unit or a citizen of Z unit. You are by birth uh, included in, in, a, in a given unit that historically has got some kind of of tradition. What's happening in the, in, the, in the Catalan case has been a declarative construction of this sovereignty of the Catalan people. And in this respect, the democratic theory beyond that does not break with the tradition that existed already. But beyond that, does not create a superior claim uh, to legitimate uh, democratic demos than the one that existed in the, in the Spanish state. So this is the first move, the creation by declaration of a sovereignty which does not break the tradition of uh, assuming an existing people as the subject of sovereignty. The second element in the, in the framing of uh, secession as a democratic process is the so-called right to decide, which involves a movement from self-determination to something which is much more appealing. Self-determination is linked to public international law and hence subject to some interpretative law, interpretative uh, mechanisms that are not administered by those claiming that right. So the right to decide, nevertheless, is a very intuitive way to legitimize any kind of decision that we want to make to receive conflicts. And in that way, by claiming a right to decide, we translate this kind of legitimacy and strength to any issue that we claim that has to be dissolved via uh, voting. Now, I think there is a logical inconsistency in claiming this right to decide in an absolute way. And the two logical inconsistencies are First, that voting by itself is not necessarily democratic. And I always use this very stupid example of the this is a mafia or the American mafia. Sorry for always bringing here this is a mafia. The American mafia, they used to take decisions by voting. We, we, could we consider that to be democratic? Uh, surely that uh, repeals our concession of the of democracy. The second logical inconsistency is that not all Jesus are available for democratic decision. Consider a very absurd example, slavery. Would you consider that uh, we can vote on the introduction of slavery? 
surely we consider this a good that is beyond democratic decisions. Hence, the mere appeal to the right to decide does not make more legitimate a specific issue on which we want to take a, a decision. And both procedures and subject matter need to be considered together with the right to vote. So this is my second criticism to this framing of decision as a democratic, as a democratic um, right. The, the third and four um, elements are fairly, uh, fairly easy. Uh, the third one, I think, is the crucial one. It's the one in, in which I concentrate my criticism, which is the, the fact that um, the theory of uh, democratic secession operates on the notion of undefined majorities. So there is no pre-commitment to specific majorities that could legitimate secession. And what has happened specifically in the Catalan case is that the, the rules that establish given majorities for certain uh, legal instruments are the ones that legitimate secession. So if you have a requirement of 50% of the votes in parliament to approve a resolution or a law or a motion, that requirement automatically is transferred as the requirement to be met for secession decisions. And that creates a a kind of very strong paradox is that the reform of the current statute of autonomy in Catalonia requires the, the, the vote of three-fifths of the, of, the, of the chambers, whereas decisions taken by 50% of the votes or even less amount to a decision towards independence. So there's a kind of uh, strong paradox uh, here. And finally, the fourth element is framing of uh, as a kind of democratic process refers to the instrumental di dimension, the, the, the use of referendum. And in, in several secession theories, uh, secession as a democratic process, they exclusively refer to referendums as the instrument. So as far as you use some kind of popular consult, people consult, this could be considered democratically legitimate. I don't have a lot of uh, difficulties with instrumental dimension. My only comment here, which I always uh, address to, to this kind of theorization, is that there is not a kind of very strong embeddedness with a theory of democratic, uh, of the representative democracy. So apparently direct democracy overtakes this primary decision, but then disappears as a mechanism to be a link to the operation of a representative um, democracy. Um, I, I have gone very quickly through these four elements of the theory of democratic secession. And if you want to see a more elaborated, uh, a more elaborated criticism, I, I, I refer to this word that is in the, in the bottom of the screen. Now, as I said, the, the Catalonian conflict uh, illustrates this antagonist, this opposition between democracy and rule of law. And so far I have presented the four elements in the democratic theory of secession with some criticism. What I want to show now in this part is the opposition to the rule of law, uh, how it did work in practice. So whereas the democratic theory, although had some practical implications, was more of a theoretical construction, nevertheless with some very practical implications, the challenge to the rule of law was a very specific and practical uh, concretion. And there are four, again here, four components of this clash between democratic aspirations and rule of law. The first class refers to bypassing existing leg legality and the parallel adoption of the rule of law legality. So what happened in this process was basically the rejection of the hierarchical position of the Spanish constitutional law and the parallel creation of ad hoc norms that assume explicitly supremacy in the legal pyramid. So basically these norms uh, repeal Spanish legislation and assume explicitly the position of the supreme law of the land. And uh, that was uh, clearly in a, creating a parliament, uh, Catalonian parliament resolution that declared uh, the future government of Catalonia to comply exclusively with norms and mandates approved by this chamber. So that was a repeal, total repeal of, uh, of uh, Spanish legislation. Of course, the Spanish uh, constitutional court declared this uh, unlawful and inconstitutional. There was an, a weak spot in this in this process of bypassing system legality and um, creating an ad hoc legality, which was the recognition of uh, European Union and international law. Uh, so new Catalan law will be disconnected from the Spanish law, but nevertheless will be connected to European 
and, uh, and international law. And I think it's a weak spot because that in a way subordinated or, or make a deficiency of Catalon, uh, Catalonian law. If you take that seriously to European Union law on one hand and to the international public law on the, on the other hand. And that explains why in the debate, in the independence debate in, in Catalonia, the position of the European Union was so important because they didn't want to disconnect totally for the whole legal structure uh, in three levels, but rather only with the Spanish one. And of course, the, the, the dominant position in European law was that uh, unilateral association was uh, not acceptable. And within public international law, there were doubts whether the principles of determination apply in the case of um, so, Okay, thank you. So there was the first uh, the first component of this rule of law challenge. Second one was the illegal assumption of powers, not devolved to the regional power, that imply the use of uh, referendums with several constitutional court sentences uh, cancelling and all in this. this. Third component, which I think is uh, very important, even though perhaps of a lower level, which is ignoring procedural warranties in enacting legislation for independence. And there are all kinds of things here. First, fast-tracking independence legislation. Second, uh, changing the parliamentary agenda to, by, uh, to bypass the existing order and introduce the new topics. Approving laws against the legal opinion of advisors and uh, lack of uh, procedural warranties in the referendum. And finally, last but not least, the control of uh, counter organs by the majority. So that creates a kind of, uh, of tension here, which is particularly um, in work. And the final element in this uh, rule of law clauses is, of, of course, the declare disobedience to the constitutional court. Here I have this, um, this picture of the tweet by the former president of uh, the Catalan regional government, in which he displays very proudly the five sentences from the constitutional court that he claims to have disobeyed. So this explicit endowment of disobeying constitutional court as the basis of uh, and these things. Now I come to, to, to my to my known conclusion. What is exactly the area of conflict? And rather than consider that this is exclusively a conflict between democracy and rule of law, I think that the problem lies in the quality of the theory of democratic secession. And uh, it's, a, it's a question about understanding that the conflict over sovereignty happens within the seceding unit. So this goes very much in line with the, with the, uh, with the paper of, of the organizers of this uh, seminar in which they argue that the complex of sovereignty originate within, within units. But here the unit will be the regional unit, the, the seceding unit itself. And I, I try to argue that on the basis of, the, of two assumptions which have to do with the majorities required. 100% of majority will make uh, will make independence absolutely um, unavoidable and deniable. Less than 50% will make it absolutely legitimate. So the questions to set the conflict, to identify the conflict, refer precisely to this area between 50 and 100%. And there are two questions here to define this internal conflict. The second question, the second one, is what is the majority threshold between 100% and 50 that will make acceptable independence for all parties in the conflict? And all parties here refers to European Union, national, regional new sovereignty, those who are in favor of creating new order, but also regional minorities who will be affected by the creation of a new sovereignty. So if in a situation like Catalonia, you have 49% of people not supporting independence, surely the conflict requires to provide some kind of um, response to the claims of those guys or those people who make then accept the creation of a new order. And without this response, you cannot really consider legitimate in democratic terms. And this because democracy is as, is as much as, as majority as is about minorities, let's remember as uh, Kelsey. And finally, the second question, the second important question here is what is the origin of the conflict? What majority gives legitimacy to the demand for negotiating the conflict over independence? Is it 49% of the votes, like it happened in the Catalan case, is 50% or is 55? What is the majority that makes a conflict, something has to be negotiated? And there is always a conflating in, in processionist arguments, processionist ar arguments between both questions. And the factor check of support for question number one 
becomes the response to question number two. So, and, uh, and with this will be my last word. I, this is something you can really follow in the debates of the Montenegro referendum, in which the majority that was required coincided with the majority was in favor before the referendum of independence. So you identify how much people support you and that becomes the normative criteria to establishing the legitimacy of, uh, of uh, secession. So that's everything. I'm very sorry to have been so quick in my presentation. I hope it was more or less clear and I will be delighted to respond to your questions. Thank you, Natalie, and thank you all. Thank you very much.